Hi there my crafty friends. Today's project is an art journal page. I've been inspired by some recent pictures and projects I've seen of paper weaving and I thought I wanted to give it a go and this is my interpretation. I'm going to use some magazine cutouts to do the actual paper weaving. I found some lovely pages with bright colors, the turquoise and the dark pink but I'm first going to start my base pages as I do with some mixed media I'm going to add some collage pieces first these pieces I'm using here are coffee stand pages that I've used and I'm adding them with some Mod Podge I add Mod Podge to the base page I stick this on top and then I add Mod Podge on top to seal it I'm placing these just randomly. I really don't have a plan as yet. I just place them where I think they'll look good. A lot of this will get covered up when we add the paper weaving and the paint but some of it will shine through and that is why I actually put it down. I actually have a video explaining why I use some collaging on all the base pages of my art journaling. I'll link that video below in the description if you'd like to have a look and see the difference between adding collage pieces and not adding them. I've actually done a comparison and it makes a really big difference. So although you're covering most of it up, the little bits that do shine through the paint add a lot of depth and dimension to your piece. I'm now adding some gesso and I'm concentrating more of the gesso on the paper edges or the seams where they overlap one another, the edge of the, each piece of collage. The reason I do this is to make everything more blendy so that there isn't these sharp edges of where the collage pieces end and start. This gives it a bit of a cohesive look, makes it more blendy and misty. I've used that term before. I like that softer look. If you compare now the left to the right before I add the gesso, it makes a really big difference. I'm also adding gesso to the rest of the page to lighten it up and I'm concentrating on some areas a little darker so there's more white contrast and others I'm just leaving it quite soft so it covers some of the background text but not totally, just softens everything. This will also help to waterproof the paper so when I add the colour it doesn't make everything soggy. These are my magazine pages that I found. I love the colors. So I've just pulled those out of the magazine and I'm going to just tear them into strips. I'm not really measuring. I'm just eyeballing it. Just strips about a centimeter or a centimeter and a half um, in width. And just doesn't matter if there is some writing, we can cut that off, but just try get bits that you find interesting and colors that you like. Once I have all my strips ready, I'm going to start the paper weaving. Now just to let you know, when I film my videos, I film everything that I create. I don't make something and then make it again to create a video. I film as I go. So I film my experiments, I film my flops, and I tend to share everything with you. Now in saying that, um, I've never done paper weaving before, I haven't done it maybe since school and I know what it's meant to look like and how it's supposed to work 
but I have to just work it out. So I start with the strip and then I leave gaps when I put my next strip and then I realize this is not correct. So you'll notice in the beginning part of my paper weaving, I tend to, I'm changing it a little bit and eventually once I realize how it's meant to work, it works out. But that is what art journaling is. It's all about experimenting and trying and actually having fun. Here we go, we're taking it off and we're going to start again. And the reason that I share all this with you is because I want you to see that it's okay to make mistake, it's okay to have a flop, it's okay to try the same thing 50 times until you get it right. There's no perfection, it's just about having fun and just trying new things. So now I've worked it out and I'm doing the paper weaving again and I've decided to make it only on the bottom right corner, not all the way up to the top of the page. I'm making it smaller and then I'm adding the same colors to the left hand side, but not in paper weaving, just in some, just adding some colors um, so it can balance and contrast. It's very exciting when you see it coming together like this and when you see the colors that you've used, how well they work in the, in the weaving. It's really fun and I'm definitely going to do this paper weaving in more projects. I've used a piece of non-color, sort of just a piece from a, um, an old book. Just to balance it out, I thought it was a little bit too bright. The colors were just too bold. And just to soften it a little bit, I'm using more of a neutral tone for some of the strips. Yay. I'm happy with that. I'm just going to finish it off and then we're going to add some more layers to this project. I'm adding some colors to the left page and to the top right page above the paper weaving. This I feel balances out the pages, otherwise the, the pages will be sort of right bottom heavy because there's just so much um, focus on the paper weaving. So to balance that out, I'm just spreading the color. The same colors that I've used in the paper weaving, I'm putting uh, on other areas of the page to balance it out, sort of forming like a triangle in a rough sense. I'm now adding gesso again to soften the edges and I'm applying it now with my finger. I think gesso is my best friend. I love gesso, I use it in almost all the projects. I just love what it does to the pages, how you can blend with it. And I do think for me, it's sort of one of the staples of my art room. I always have to have gesso. I use it probably 99% of my projects. You can always use a wet baby wipe to remove any wet gesso in areas if you've put too much. I feel it needs a bit more balancing between the left and the right. So I've cut out little rough squares from the same colors and I'm adding it to the top left of the page. This is sort of mimicking the paper weaving. I just didn't want to do paper weaving again. I thought it would be too much. So I thought the little squares sort of Looks similar but not exactly and it balances with the colors. And of course some more gesso.
Once the gesso is dry, we're going to add the color. I'm using my color burst powders. I'll put a link to these in the description below so you can see what they are. They're super concentrated powders, so you only need a very, very little bit um, of the powder. And then if you add the water, the color just ignites it and it just becomes like an explosion of color. I absolutely love them. The colors are quite vivid. You get them in lots of different ranges. I got quite the bright colors. So I'm using the turquoise in this one. And then once I've put it on, I just put a lot of water, move the book around and let the paint move and just sort of take a life of its own. And for some reason, and I don't actually know how it happened, I'll try and do it again. If you can see in the background, the gesso seems to have somehow cracked and the color has gone in between there and it's given it a beautiful effect. I'll show you at the end a close up of it, but I really like the way that worked and I will try and achieve it again. Um, on purpose so I can see how it's caused that. Use quite a bit of water to help the colors move around and then once you're happy with that and it's dry you can add some splatter. I enjoy adding splatter so I'm adding some splatter now with the same turquoise. I've just put a little bit of the powder in my palette added some water and just splashed that over the pages randomly. I have this scrapbook paper by Kaiser Craft. It's a range called Secret Garden Collection and I quite liked some of the elements and I thought this little flag with a little quote would suit it really well. The color is absolutely perfect and I'm going to use this as part of my embellishing of this page. Just finding a placement for it on the page and then trying to decide what I'm going to put on the left hand side. I really think it needs this dark pink coral colour to balance out the right so I'm going to make a heart just out of the same color from the magazine piece. I'm deciding what I need for the background of the heart. I do feel it needs something. It's a little lost um, and just a bit bare if you just put the heart directly onto the background. So I'm using some strips of paper with different colors from the rest of the project just to try and find a good composition and a balance um, to make the heart look good and to stand out as one of the focal points. Bear with me while I try about 17 different things. Only joking, it wasn't 17, but it was quite a few. I get there eventually. I have also purposefully left some pieces overhanging on the page. I haven't trimmed everything down to the size of my art journal. You can see that some of the paper weaving bits are hanging down and out. Same as the top, I like that spilled over look, so I've left quite a few elements hanging off the page. When in doubt, add some cheesecloth. I tend to add cheesecloth to quite a few of my projects, just underneath any kind of elements. I find that it just sort of pulls everything together and just makes it more uniform. Um, it might just be my imagination, but that's what I feel. And I'm also adding a piece of white tissue paper just to soften the background a little bit. I 
I also like the texture that the cheesecloth adds so I've added some to the right hand side and once I'm happy with the composition I'm going to glue everything down with the hot glue and the reason I'm using a hot glue gun for this is I'm sticking paper onto a background of mixed media it's quite chunky there's paint and I think it'll adhere it will adhere better with a hot glue than with a glue stick you could also use craft glue but I do like the instant stick of a hot glue so I tend to go with that If you enjoyed this video, I would love it if you gave it a thumbs up. Also, don't forget to subscribe to my channel as I have lots more videos coming. If you click the little notification bell when you subscribe, you'll be notified every time I upload new content. A few little embellishments just to finish it off. I'm going to use my white acrylic marker just to go around the heart a little bit, give it a bit of a frame and make it a bit more pronounced. I want to add a little bit of white splatter. I'm just going to use my white acrylic paint. I'm going to water it down a little bit and then just with a paintbrush, I'm going to just splash some on top of the entire project. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you again soon. Bye.